Hello to all my viewers. Welcome back to another video. Today, I'll be sharing what happened over my Easter weekend as I thought there was enough things that went on that is video worthy um, that hopefully should keep you guys entertained. This is not meant to be a, well, look at me, look at me, look at what I did video. It's just, I just wanted to share with you guys what happened over my Easter weekend. Um, and yeah, let's get stuck into it. So we'll start on Easter Friday. I know Friday isn't on the weekend, but I'm counting Easter Friday as the start of my weekend anyway, as I was very excited as we were going to Yarra Valley Racecourse to watch our girl Crimson Light run in the country, Oaks. It was my first time driving out to Yarra Valley, first time driving on most of the streets I drove on, but what made it a great start to the weekend is that instead of the weird lady that always gives you directions, I got Matt Hill's voice as my directions. In 600 metres, turn right. Sorry about how dark of a colour that video was, but it must have just been pretty cloudy driving up there. So it got to the time of the country, Oaks and Crimson Light. We had Craig Williams on. He was instructed to go back and try and come around them, but because he jumped so well, he landed outside the leader, eventually took up the lead down the back straight, and took luck out of the equation. Craig Williams kept the tempo up, was able to build momentum from the 600 meters. That's when you can see he starts to ride her along at about the 600 meters. She really wobbles around the corner because she's a big track horse and Yarra Valley is a very tight track. But once she got into the straight, she really lengthened out and put a length and a quarter was the winning margin on the second horse. So it was a really good win. From hard squeeze, McGrana runs on, Star Spangle Baby out of it, into the straight, Crimson Line led from hard squeeze Macrana runs on strongly crimson light in front Macrana is inch by inch wearing her down though crimson light Macrana from Wackamana the inside but crimson light does defy them what made it even better is that I was on racing.com multiple times inadvertently just after the race had been run you can see me in the back of Mick Kent's interview I've sort of got my um, back to the camera but I'm just high-fiving and handshaking all the Crimson Light owners I could see that I didn't watch the race with, and it was a very good moment afterwards. And then you can see me again at the start of Craig Williams' interview in the middle of the Yarra Valley Mounting Yard, getting the photo done. And also midway through Craig Williams' interview when I poked my head in the scales room because I saw someone I knew and I wanted to say hello. And then you can see me um, make a quick exit because I found out or just remembered that they were working. So that was Friday at Yarra Valley. Crimson Light will now most likely go straight into what they call the Santa Rea Stakes at Morpherville on May the 25th. So she's going to have a bit of a freshen up slash let up or whatever you want to call that. Um, and we're very excited with her. So there you go, a successful Easter Friday. Now we get on to Easter Saturday and... I work at the Balnearing Racing Club and it was our last meeting on Saturday, the 30th of March, the last of six meetings for the season and wasn't it one to remember. I don't think I'll ever forget race one at Balnearing on Saturday as my mate Kale Panuto commentated his second ever race over the loudspeaker and what made it even better was that I tipped the winner 40 times. Take a look. Plastic Dreams takes us down. He runs me down about four away. They run towards the judge now and 40 times in the middle of the track takes over. He's about four lengths in front from Plastic Dreams and now back in third Texas Dan Dreams going wax home 40 times though. Breaks away in the middle. Plastic Dreams giving it a run for its money. 40 times in Plastic Dreams fighting back 40 times in front and holds on from Plastic Dreams. Dreams storm third in four. So that was really good. It got on a bit in the day and we got to race five at Balnearing or just before race five at Balnearing when it was a pretty stressful time for the racing club. That was only the bad thing that happened uh, over the weekend was that the track was being inspected in two different places for being softer than, than the rest of the track, which could have made it unrace worthy and we could have finished up early. But luckily we pushed on and the races had to be delayed, which was in hindsight, it was a really good thing because the Flemington races were run five minutes after the Balnearing races. So I had to miss all the Flemington races. And what my job requires at Balnearing is me to be present just after the race has been run. So it was pretty difficult for me um, and with a lot of other people 
that were at the races, playing them on their phone. I didn't really want to know the result without watching the race, just because that's how I like it. Um, so due to the races getting pushed back, I was able to watch Flemington and, um, yeah, Balnearing at different times at my own leisure. So that was really good. So you might be wondering, Salmonator, well, what do you do at Balnearing Racing Club exactly? Well, I usually have three different jobs on race day. Number one is to put the numbers as they grow, go across the line, the numbers on some like magnetic thing that everyone on course can see so that like they know if their bet gets up, like five beats eight and three enough to stick a five and an eight and a three all um, all down the side of that magnetic uh, little thing. So that's one job. And then I have to go down into near where the jockey's area is and collect all the saddle cloths that come back in um, after the race has been run and just hang them back in their pigeon holes so that the next trainers that need to get their the saddle cloth to go saddle up their horse for the next race, that means, so my job means that it can be done more efficiently that getting the saddle to the horse for the next race um, that didn't really make sense, did it, me explaining it, but I'm sure you get the gist, and then the other one is, I'll put a photo up, the jockey's board in the middle of the Balnearing race course, I have to change as well between, um, all the races, so that takes usually five to ten minutes, but I love that job, so that's what I do, and I think it was in between race three and four at Balnearing on Saturday, when I had one unit, my first unit play of the day at Flemington was on Son's Dude. I watched a replay in between race three and four at Balnearing, and gee, I could not believe what I saw. It flopped out of the gates. I think it was behind by a good two to three lengths off the second last horse in the early stages, and I thought there's no possible chance it's winning this. But it got to the outside and exploded. 300 metres to go. Najem Sahail held together. Two lengths to Katsu shown its head, followed by Gennady. What you need then, Vivian and Sons Dude. Najem Sahail, 150 metres to go. Still two Gennady. What you need, Sons Dude's flying home. Najem Sahail at the 50. Sons Dude is storming home and makes this really interesting. And that was on my way down for the jockey's boards that I watched that race. So I did the double cobra in front of everybody at the Palnaring race course. And yeah, that was a pretty good, that was a pretty good moment. So getting back to what I was saying before, just before or after the track inspection have ta has taken place and the jockeys are all good with it and the races get pushed back, my best of the day at Flemington was running and I was able to watch Estriella win and wasn't it a Flemington great a win? Half two links, she's all shenanigans, Arkansas kids, Stretton Angel and Saltair late. Now he goes for Estriella and she pings away. She's two and a half links in front. She's too good. Estriella, brilliant. It was a better price on Wednesday and Thursday. It got smashed in on Saturday to under $2.00. But nonetheless, a win's a win, so that was really good to see. I tipped the next winner at Balnearing Race 5. Mr. Zygman won the Easter Cup at Balnearing. How about this win right up the inside? Need a bigger boats in front. Bonza boots. Cooper's put all two creed into the race. And Mr. Zygman has taken every shortcut. He's sweaty on an inside runner. And he's got it now. So Mr. Zygman got through and shot to the lead. Bonza boots all two creed. are battling on. But Mr. Zygman with the rails hugging ride up along the inside. It was a beauty from Vagona. He's got the Easter plate all wrapped up. A 10 out of 10 ride. Mr. Zygman too strong. So after race five, Balnaring had got some what back on time and five minutes after the running of race six was scheduled to be the Australian Cup so um, the race was run at Balnearing it was over a thousand meters so it was a quick race and I got down to watch the um sorry not to watch to grab the saddle cloths from the previous race obviously to hang them back in their pigeon holes and for the next trainers to collect but luckily one of the other committee members at Balnearing had the Australian Cup on their phone like literally right next to me and I was able to do two things at once which I was really happy about and what I was even more happy about is that I'm wearing the Godolphin blue at the moment Cascadian my tip at about $8.50 sort of well didn't really saw just got past Pride of Jenny late to win and I did the double cover again. I was so excited because uh, I didn't really expect Cascadian to win even though I tipped it because that's the game of horse racing. But it was a really, really, really good moment. I can't believe it won and I, I can't recreate the reaction right now because it's just too good to do. So 
You can take a look at Cascadian's win Pride here. of Jenny, 300 metres to go, four lengths in front. A tissue's trying to grind her down. Then Mr Brightside, Cascadian, Pride of Jenny. She can run through walls at the 150, but a tissue and Cascadian are coming at her. Pride of Jenny at the 100, Cascadian wearing her down. Pride of Jenny at the 50, Cascadian's got up to her. Cascadian back to back. Cascadian just beats Pride of Jenny in a brilliant finish. So that was awesome. My best of the day was race seven at Balnaring, a horse called Achaeus. And, and a it big won. lead. It's opened them right up. Sent to war and want to get on the bike because Arceus takes them to the bend. It does so. Four, five in front. Chestnut Thunder circling. Sent to war's into the clear now with Darugal Diamond. But Arceus is in a race of its own at the moment. It's got a margin of five. It's holding them comfortably. And Arceus pinched it with a mid-race move. Angela Benz brings up the winner to the last and does so impressively. So that was all really, really good. The day finished up at Balnaring. And hold on a sec. And if you're a footy fan, then you'll know what I'm about to talk about with this scarf. So we got back home from Balnaring. We had to do a little bit of pack up and we got back home from Balnaring with 10 minutes to go in the last quarter of the Essendon versus St Kilda game. And well, I am an Essendon supporter, as you can see by the scarf. And it was a really stressful last 10 minutes. But the Jake Stringer goal... My reaction again is something you'll never be able to get back. Just that, I, again, like Cascadian, I didn't expect him to do it. I didn't expect him to kick the goal from 55 metres out, but he did and got the Bombers in front. Have a look. He's got him. He's got him 49 out. If there's one man that can pull something out, Daisy, we know who it'll be. A tough kick. Three points up the Saints. He gives it everything he's oh. got. Long drop on his hand. Oh, the bombers have hit the front. So obviously it put us in front and we ended up going on to win the match by four points. And, well, any win under a goal has to be celebrated a lot. So I was very, very happy after that result. And I, it just made me think, wow. This weekend could not get any better so far. I've had a good day at Balnaring, winners, and just the day overall. Brilliant day at Flemington with my staking plans. Yesterday, Crimson Light wins at Yarra Valley, and I didn't crash driving up to Yarra Valley. So, what could get better? Enter Premier League Soccer. My team, Newcastle United, were playing at 11.30pm on the Saturday night. And I thought, yeah, no, nah, I'll just watch them tomorrow morning, which is Sunday morning. So I got up on Sunday morning. I watched the full game. We were 3-1 down with 20 minutes to play. We got a penalty. We scored to make it 3-2 with about 10 minutes to go. Then one of our players called Harvey Barnes scored a goal to make it 3-3. And you could just sense the momentum was on our side. And we were the most likely team out of us and West Ham to get the winner. And what a brilliant winner we got with Harvey Barnes. Have a look at this goal. Away and turns again. This is Barnes. Beats his man. Harvey Barnes! was awesome and you guessed it the double cobra came out again for that goal and it was just an amazing moment that's when I thought well wow, this weekend could not get any better it could not get any better just everything that happened it was amazing it all went right it was unbelievable and I thought that's as I said at the start of the video there's enough things that happened in my weekend to make a video about it so I've double cobbered Crimson Light, Achaeus, Sons Dupe, Cascadian, Jakey Stringer, and Harvey Barnes' is winner. That's seven. That's seven double cobras in one weekend. I think that's a new record for me. That's my go-to celebration for anything really good that happens. So those were seven really good moments on the weekend. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it was a bit of a different video, not so much the horse racing analyzing business that I usually do. But that will be back, a preview of the Caulfield Easter Cup meeting coming up on Thursday for the Saturday meeting. I'll see you all then for another video.